Hello, I'm Anthony back on track with River Song today and we finally got the vocals recorded. Here they are. Been trying to get these down for a few weeks now and life's been intervening as it does. Anyway, we've got them in. We're just going to listen to the vocal section. I'm just going to jump straight in at uh, bar 45. We'll listen to what we've got and then uh, come back and have a chat about it. Quite a bit to talk about with this particular vocal recording today. So without further ado. If you never even had a doubt, you'd go As always, fabulous performance by Pauline. Did this yesterday and yeah, she was just straight back into it after quite a while uh, without doing any vocal work. I did, however, do some um, quite a bit of prep. I've been unhappy with the various levels uh, for, the, for the input to the mic uh, for some time. So over the past couple of days, I've basically pulled it all to bits and rebuilt it. It's so easy to get... Um, to get levels in your signal chain wrong and have one thing too loud and start compensating and it, it kind of the problem just snowballs i was discovering that there wasn't too much noise in the microphone signal and i didn't really know where it was coming from it goes right back to the audio interface i've got this curious loopback system because i have to talk to you and record it in obs it introduces an additional layer of complexity that basically can trip you up and this fader here is the problem. This is in the Focusrite audio control. I have this loopback, this um, output from analog three and four goes back into my audio interface. That's the pair that goes off to OBS to be recorded. So over on OBS, over here, I have this audio input, which every now and again, if you're seeing me kind of casting a, a, a glance over on the right hand side, I'm basically checking my input levels. And when I forget to check that properly is when recordings can be too quiet or too loud. There's so much to keep track of when you're recording a, a YouTube video that even after you know a few years of doing this, I still make really basic mistakes. One of them was that the input level for this thing was too low, frankly. Um, the last time I balanced it, for whatever reason, I ended up setting it to minus 10 dB which meant that the signal coming out of the entire system and back into the audio interface that was ultimately being recorded into OBS was too quiet. What that meant was that I was having to boost everything else to get to a reasonable audio level. This is now set to minus six. And for reasons that I can't quite get my head around, it's something to do with the fact that the signal must be being doubled. It's coming out of the system and going back in and the thing that's being recorded in OBS is perfectly happy and healthy and just touching, just clipping the red light when that loopback system is at minus 6 dB. Anybody who knows why, stick it in the comments because I am kind of curious if I set that output to naught, the signal is way too hot going into OBS and I've got to pull my stereo output from Cubase right down to keep it under, under any kind of control. So once I got that 
kind of basic fundamental loopback system correct and flat, I was then able to start working on the microphone input level. So we spent about half an hour yesterday before the session basically figuring out how far away from the microphone Pauline should be standing. Now, I'm not a professional sound engineer. I'm sure that there is an optimum distance that you're supposed to stand away from any particular microphone. This is a, an AT2020, and we've determined, basically empirically, um, that Pauline is supposed to be about 20 centimeters, eight inches away from the microphone, so that we don't get violent plosive sounds. There isn't too much air pressure kind of smacking into the microphone and causing nastiness, but she's not so far away that she's having to sing too loud or I'm having to turn the input level up too much to get a decent signal. We've never done that before. We've never been quite so scientifically controlled as to how far away is she supposed to be standing. As a matter of interest, I'm about 12 inches away from the microphone at this point, and I find that that makes a, you know, makes a decent recording level for me. So this is one of these situations where you kind of baby step your way into trouble. Over the course of time, you stop taking account of all of these different factors that when they accumulate together, end up with a noisy, hissy, badly balanced signal. So we just went right back to square one. And so the, the performance as recorded is nice and healthy, but not too loud, not too close to zero that I can't do any processing on it without you know, causing the problems of, of clipping and everything just works really well. So if I solo and we just listen to If you never even had a doubt you'd go along forever It's just it's just a good quality clean signal to really show you exactly what's on the microphone itself. I'd have to shut me up. I'll do that once more and this time mute the mic that I'm talking to you on so that we can just hear a completely noiseless signal. If you never even had a doubt, you'd go along forever. I'm really happy with that quality of signal. Just got a nice big healthy signal now with very, very low hiss. That's the first time really I've ever been able to say that with, uh, with these vocal recordings. And the important thing is from this perspective, this is the first song that I've put vocals down for. Pauline's recorded them, but obviously I've been doing the engineering where the album is in, in view. So I'm, this is the first song on the album, The River, and we're gonna re-record re every single vocal performance, all of the main vocals at least, I haven't yet decided about the harmonies. Because for a multitude of reasons, partly technical incompetence, partly environmental considerations, I only moved the PC into a separate room with lots of long cables between them and all that kind of, you know, rewiring that, that happened last year. So for a number of reasons, this is the first time when I've been able to really nail this stuff down and start to approach as close to a professional sound as I can get in what's clearly a home environment. So that was hugely important, the technical process of getting the thing recorded. But there were, t there were two um, functional changes that we made when recording this vocal line. Um, that have made a big impact as well. The first one was to to record without the piano guide vocal. So here's the guide vocal in the background. It's actually muted because it's done now. But this is the thing that vo that Pauline sang along to. If you never even had a doubt. Now for the first, I don't know, three quarters of an hour of the the session that we did yesterday, the guide vocal was running in the background all the time, and Pauline was singing over the top of it. Once we'd finished recording the entire song, I was happy. I was I, I knew that she sung each phrase um, well, and I was going to be able to put together a, 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 a good performance. And I said, "Well, you know, I'm happy. Do you want to do it again? You know, have you still got gas in the tank?" And she said, "Well, I want to do it without the guide vocal. You know, take that away and just let me sing naturally." We have done that in the past but I've never really kind of considered it to be an essential aspect. So it's, yeah, okay, sure, let's go for it. Took the piano away. She knew the, the melody by that point, so she was able to sing it without problem. And maybe with the exception of one or two of these little takes, they were all, all of the, the final versions were taken from, the, from the, the performances without the guide vocal. She just sings more naturally, more organically without this heavily quantized, you know, unnatural sound in the background. So it helps with pitch, 
but it detracts from organic performance. And I kind of, I don't know, I feel the need to draw a graph, <laughs> you know, to plot the difference between those two things. But frankly, the performance is more important than than the pitch. I mean, Pauline's got great pitch and I have to do very little, very, very audio um, processing uh, on her takes anyway. But when the piano guide vocal is there, she is more pin on. But we're talking about, you know, a few cents either way. I'd rather do any minor corrections in Vary Audio and get that organic kind of feeling behind it. So her performances were just dramatically superior when we took the piano guideline away. And I'm going to put a note somewhere to remind me to always do that in the future. I could very easily forget. Um, but we, we talked about it at some length after yesterday's session. So... Hopefully one of us <laughs> will remember each time we do a vocal performance these day, uh, from this point onwards to mute the, the piano guideline once she's absolutely nailed what the melody is. The other thing which is definitely a first for me is that this time I comped the entire vocal performance in situ. Um, I didn't change the balance of the rest of the song at all. I mean, I've got the master bus. I can pull the whole thing down if I want. It might actually be that the vocal performance is still going straight to stereo out. So let's have a look. Yeah, it is. So the vocals are currently going directly to the stereo out. That's just my mistake, forgetting to reset them. That's what we do when we're doing a recording so that she's louder than the rest of the song and I haven't brought it back into the mix. Not particularly a problem because I've, I've mixed the, very roughly mixed the, the vocals into the song from the main track itself. So that's why I, I kind of missed it. But comping the vocal line in place with the rest of the music around it, I'm losing a little bit of um, accuracy from the perspective of I might miss a, a, a tiny bit of traffic noise in the background or some like you know minor imperfection in the performance. But I'm listening very, very carefully, as carefully as I possibly can. And if I can't hear it when I'm comping, then I'm happy to leave it in. Once again, I'd rather make sure that the, the vocal performance is truly bedded in the song. In the past, I've taken everything else away and just purely listened to the vocal performance so that all of the pitches are correct. I can see, you know, in the from a, from a timing perspective that, that everything is working. But if it's not sitting in with the song, then I'm not interested anymore. So all of the decisions that I'm making these days are completely tailored to the to the human performance when I play these guitar lines in, I'm recording these guitar lines live. When Pauline sings, she's singing live. That's much more important than any grid or any level of technical perfection. So I'm prepared to accept those little imperfections in the vocal performance if it sounds good to me. That's the most important thing. To be fair, once I'd completed the comp, I did go back and listen to the entire thing in solo as carefully and as, as I possibly could to see if there were any imperfections there. And I didn't find anything bad enough to make me think, right, I need to go back and take that out again or, or, or try to find a different version. So as you can see, all of the other lanes are gone. All of the other various takes, you know, maybe 10, 12 takes in total from which this uh, comp performance was taken. All of that's now gone. This is the vocal. I am happy with it. And we're moving on. Probably going to need some vocal harmonies, I think, um, but I haven't really given them any thought yet. Uh, anyway, that's all for the future. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please hit the like button. I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.